Uh, this is a two-part interview with the CEO of the Carbon Market Institute, Peter Castellas, about the government's proposals for its safeguard mechanism under the Emissions Reduction Fund. In part one, we talk about the uh, safeguard mechanism and its possible future development. In part two, we look at some of the more detailed proposals that the government has in relation to the treatment of the electricity generation sector and the setting of baselines for new and significantly expanded facilities. Along with the long-running debate on the renewable energy target, uh, many in energy industry participants, uh, many of our clients among them, are waiting to see what the federal government will do in respect of the safeguard mechanism under the Emissions Reduction Fund. A consultation paper on the mechanism was recently released, and like us, the Carbon Market Institute is following these developments with a very keen eye. The Carbon Market Institute is an independent industry association that assists Australian businesses with the opportunities and challenges arising out of national and international carbon trading. And we're very fortunate to be joined today by the Institute's CEO, Peter Castellas. Welcome, Peter. Thank you, Greg. Um, Peter, the consultation paper states that one of the uh, purposes, or in fact the purpose, of the uh, safeguard mechanism is to ensure that emissions reductions purchased through the fund are not offset by uh, emissions increases in other areas of the Australian economy. Um, however, uh, it also provides, or it's government policy, that uh, it'll only be very large facilities, those facilities that have direct emissions of more than 100,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent per annum, that will actually come within the mechanism. And on top of that, the baselines for existing facilities uh, that have to be exceeded before the compliance mechanisms are triggered, uh, those baselines are set on the highest annual emissions of the facilities over the 2009-10 to 2013-14 period. Uh, in light of all of that, Peter, do you think that the safeguard mechanism will be effective in controlling Australia's emissions? Thanks for the question, Grant. Uh, I, I won't give you a one-word answer, but uh, I think the important thing to consider right now in the release of the consultation paper as you highlighted is that the um, rules need to be set between now and the 1st of October this year. So the consultation um, from our perspective is a genuine consultation. The framework for the safeguard mechanism was actually incorporated into the legislation that was passed last year at the end of last year with amendments made from Senator Nick Xenophon that set out the framework for how the safeguard mechanism could operate. And the rules will now be actually determined in terms of um, how baselines are set, who is covered and officially. So the paper sets out um, who, what the government currently thinks, and as, as you indicated, um, the top, uh, top emitters are 140 odd, odd uh, uh, facilities. But it, from, from our point of view, I think to, to come to your question, the safeguard mechanism needs to, be, make, needs to make a, an effective contribution to limiting emissions growth to meet our international targets. So in the consultation paper, the safeguard mechanism objective is highlighted as, as uh, being um, important to, not, to offset emissions gained under the, the crediting and purchasing side of the fund. However, the uh, explanatory memorandum and, and the, the act that was passed last year actually states that the emissions reduction fund in its totality, crediting, purchasing and safeguard, should actually um, help us meet our international obligations. So I think for, to, for the safeguard mechanism to be effective, the rules need to be designed in a way so that the, uh, the safeguard mechanism can work in conjunction with the emissions reduction, purchasing and crediting side of things, the two and a half billion, um, to effectively limit emissions growth that correlate with our target. So for it to be effective to do that, um, the, the coverage needs to be defined, and as you indicated, 50% uh, uh, effectively of the Australian emissions would be covered under the thresholds that, that there are mm -hmm. uh, outlined. Um, if you broaden that coverage um, to uh, facilities exceed over 25,000 tonnes, you move from 50% to 60%. If you go to 10,000 tonnes as a threshold, you get 70% coverage of the, the economy. So, so coverage is one thing, but the really important thing is how baselines are set. So as you indicated, the baselines being set at a five-year historical high um, going back to 2009-10 means that um, the emissions growth is effectively uh, business as usual mm. um, or thereabouts um, for the foreseeable future. Now, if we actually have to achieve emissions reduction 
uh, 5% by 2020 and our post-2020 targets are being developed, then the safeguard mechanism actually needs to, in, in our view, uh, apply rules that allow for those baselines to be tightened over time, for mm -hmm. perhaps a, a, a coverage to be broadened, but for there to be real incentive for business to be able to um, uh, reduce their emissions in light of a stable and enduring policy framework. So if the safeguard mechanism was designed in a way that provide long-term certainty for business, what the rules will need to spell out, in our view, between now and 1st of October, is um, how those um, baselines will potentially decline over time, what the mechanism that would be, what is the most flexible um, and, and uh, efficient way to meet potential compliance costs, and that is what sort of units can be used if you exceed your baseline. So what trading options are there in terms of domestic and, and international units? And the Act allows still allows for the use of international mm, units yes. um, in the rules as it's defined. Um, and, and what is the, uh, the way that the baselines will be set that relate to the um, objective of meeting our, our 2020 and our post-2020 targets? Mm. So those design features are really important to consider um, in, this, in this crucial phase. Yeah. So, so you would see that there's scope, in other words, for this safeguard mechanism, perhaps over time, uh, to be morphed into a baseline and credit trading scheme, uh, which is in an enduring nature, um, and which might cover well more than, well more than half of Australia's emissions. I, mean. yeah, I think so, uh, Grant. I think the one thing that um, that's not discussed openly at the moment in mm. uh, in uh, within government and, and in um, in sort of consultations with government is that the safeguard mechanism is effectively, if you look at the way that you know, you've set a baseline on industry, uh, once you set a baseline, then effectively you've got a baseline and credit scheme. So. Yes. You can generate credits or you can use credits to stay below your baseline. That facilitates trading, that creates a secondary market. Mm. And what I think is important also is to link, to, to, for, for the government to articulate what is the linkage between the crediting and purchasing elements of the Emissions Reduction Fund and the safeguarding. Mm. Because if you're actually creating uh, units that can be um, purchased under the crediting and purchasing mechanism, um, then those same units can be used for compliance under the uh, safeguard mechanism. There needs to be a, a better articulated link. Yes. And yeah. once that's done, it actually can facilitate the growth of a secondary market. It could potentially stimulate more domestic uh, investment in domestic abatement um, and help companies also to meet future compliance at, at a lower cost. Mm -hmm.